Hello, this is Ed. Ed, Eric Coffey. Hey, Eric, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How about yourself, man? Oh man, hey, I'm I'm trying to navigate through this GovCon world. Yeah? I really appreciate all the all the uh, information you put out there. It's wonderful. It's doing wonders for me. Thank, thank you, sir. I, I really appreciate it. I'm hoping that uh, we can help change some people's lives with this information. So, oh know. yeah, I'm I'm one of the two hundred. <laughs> You're gonna be one of the two hundred, huh? <laughs> I'm be one of the two hundred. Yes, indeed. Hey, very good, Russ. I like that, man. Tell me, um, in the short time that we have together, how can I help you? So, uh, one of the things that I I was wondering about was, you know. So on the uh, the consultant side, okay, how does that look as far as you know? I have a company now that say, hey, you know, we want to definitely be able to go after government contracts, but you know, they're a small business, but they don't they having a service disabled veteran like myself as a consultant that would help them out tremendously, and then also help me out in getting get my reputation together. Okay. So, um, how does that, how is that approach? And, and then on the back end, when it comes time, okay, you know, if I sign a contract with them, you know, you know, how, what is the, let's say, how should I price that as far as for my time and my, um, expertise? All right. So, so you have your service disabled status, right? And then you, yes. and then you have another company that's interested in working with you in terms of pursuing contracts under your service disabled status. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, what role are you going to play in this? So what role would you I like not, to play? I will be a consultant, but then also I probably am going to take on a project management, uh, role. And that's that's my background. I'm a telecommunications pr project manager, so managing that project, you know, al allows them to have someone's eyes on site. And plus, I think I should kind of really any projects I take under my name, I should keep a close eye on it. Okay, so again, um, the amount of compensation, you know, correlates directly with the amount of responsibility and and effort that's put into it, right? So if you're if you are going to be working on the site as a project manager, that's actually a separate line item that you can build in on the project cost because you're going to have to have project cost anyways and overhead, yeah. staff, things of that nature. So a project manager, that role would be an actual like line item. So that actually you can put into the cost of the actual job. Now, in terms of, you know, you're using your service disabled status, uh, a lot of times what we do is, you know, like, like, you know how they have the joint ventures and mentor protege programs. They also have teaming yeah. arrangements. So what you're talking about sounds like to me would be more of a teaming arrangement where two companies come together uh, mutually to pursue federal contracts. And that's perfectly allowable, perfectly acceptable. And then you just agree upon um, how you're going to share in on the profits. So that, again, that depends on how much work you're going to take on how much work they're going to take on. Uh, in a case where it sounds like you're going to be uh, hands-on and working on a project, then, you know, again, depending upon the, the size. Let's say let's say the job is, let's say, $200,000. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to be spending, you know, equal amount of time on the job as they are, then I don't see why anyone should get, you know, a more of a percentage, a greater percentage than the next person. But if you're going to be working a full-time job and they're going to be kind of like overseeing the whole project, then you could see where they would get uh, the lion's share of the money. Make sense? Right, right. Yeah, so I don't so, think people should, over, should, should, you know, when you look at this, I don't think we should overcomplicate the matter. Let's look at, you know, what makes sense, right? If if they're doing the majority of the work, then they should get the lion's share. They're taking on the risk, you know, if they're putting up the money, that kind of stuff, then they're taking on greater responsibility. They're taking on more risk. 
And so, you know, they should get the lion's share of the money. If you're the one right. taking on all the risk and taking on the responsibility, then you should get the lion's share. And and it, and typically, when you do it that way, you know, it tends to you have a a, a greater chance of having a, a a more of a long term relationship that works well for everyone. If if the system is not fair, or any one person feels like it's not fair to them, then you're going to have a short term relationship more than likely. It makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. And and that's like in the beginning now. Um, I don't have the funds, so like that's one of the problem. I'm turning down projects because, I mean, I just don't have the funds. I'm I just well, so, uh, so that's started another, my project. So so let's stop right there. That's another whole another issue. Uh, you should not be turning down projects because you don't have the funds. Um, you know, one of the things that I tell all of my students that go through uh, in my GovCon group and my Facebook is that listen, we teach people how to get supplier credit. There's no reason why anyone out there should be turning down projects because of lack of money. Suppliers, vendors offer credit accounts regardless of your credit score. So that's it's a whole nother ball game aside from your personal credit score. So so that you should not be turning down projects because of money. Um, you know, because you you do have the ability to get supplier credit, and there's always someone that you can bring to the table that's willing to help work in conjunction with you on a project. For, you know, if it's profitable, right? So if you've got a, a profitable opportunity, I, I promise you, there I've got people in my group that would jump all over it and would help, you know, provide some of the funding and things that you need it. But uh, no one out there should be turning on projects because of lack of money. I, I, dis, I disagree with that completely. Man, you just broke my heart because I'm probably, <laughs> I didn't turn hey. down at least, at least 1.7 right now. Listen. Million dollars worth of Oh, I mean, oh hey, my Edward, God. You know, listen, I hope I didn't break your heart, but I hope I gave you some encouragement. <laughs> now, moving forward, oh, yeah. you won't be yeah. doing that again. I, bar- I guarantee you won't do that again. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't. Yeah, so listen, what you know, again, what I'm going to say is, you know, if there's an opportunity that you've got, um, and 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 don't don't feel bad because I have other people that I've spoke to that the government reached out and sent them like direct requests for proposals and they did the same thing they didn't even respond because they were afraid of the paperwork and i could are you i go are you guys insane like there, there's no reason that you should be be uh putting something to the side that the government is saying hey listen we've got this opportunity we think you're a good fit um and if we can agree upon the price we can move forward you know i, I take i take those phone calls <laughs> okay, you know, I take those phone calls. If you know someone sends me an email, say, "Hey, look, I've got a contract opportunity in front of me," and again, I'm not talking about something that you bid, something that um, it's on the open market, something that you know, like I said, it's for you that's set aside, or or maybe uh, like you said, you're working with a company that already has the job, you know, something to that extent. But yeah, there's no reason why anyone should be turning down contracts because of lack of money. That that is not a good excuse at all. It's unacceptable. Well, now I know. Now I yeah. know. Yeah, and, and 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 trust me, I know it can be scary. I know when you know when you haven't done it before and things like that. You know, it it could be a scary thing, um, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of tell people, listen, kind of stick to the arena that you know, um, because at least you know, like you were, we were discussing in the beginning of the conversation. If, you know, you decide to bring on another company, you can kind of check out what they're doing and make sure they're doing stuff the right way. Even if you're not there on a day-to-day basis, you can go by on a periodic, you know, weekly basis, every other week, bi-weekly, whatever the case may be. And you can kind of monitor their progress and know, you know, what things to look for. That's helpful for, you know, someone who's a smaller outfit um, starting out. So that's great that you want to stay in your area. So, I mean, that's a good thing that you want to stay along the area where your skill sets uh, intertwine with uh, what you're doing and the services that you're offering. So that's perfect. But at the same time, I would not be turning on opportunities because, um, you know, things change. The market changes. Uh, you know, there's different contracting officials come into play. Some people leave out. And so the person who may you may find favor with today, that person may not be there next week. Right. So those right. opportunities may, you know, they may t- completely dry up and disappear. At least for you. I mean, they're going to be there because someone's going to do these contracts. But if you if you have favor now, I would definitely be jumping all over that stuff.